Hey gang, so I thought that this might be kind of a fun one. I am actually going to be going on vacation pretty shortly, so uh, just for the rest of the week through Friday, so I thought that this might be a fun time to do a fun episode. Since I'm actually going to be missing out um, pretty much on what's the used to be originally the cornerstone of this channel, where I go through the changes on the roadmap, I thought instead this time I might talk about how I would change the roadmap or at least talk about how uh, CIG could convey the information on what they're working on so that it's a little bit more useful both to the community and so the community could get context. Um, so if that sounds interesting, uh, stick around. I've also got the uh, Cintiq here, so this little guy here. Uh, and I thought that it might be fun to go in and kind of talk about what I am seeing as far as cycles for this game are going. And it's more than just the one dev cycle. And we'll get into that. So if that sounds good, stick around. And I just realized that I am wearing a green shirt, which is, again, the kind of professionalism you've come to expect from this channel. And we're back. So... As far as what I think, probably I've had a lot of time to think about this. And if you've heard me talk recently, where uh, the last couple times I've sounded a little bit down on the deliverables view of the roadmap, and I'm kind of like, I'm dubious about how useful this information is to the community, like what we're actually getting out of it. And I always feel that when you're doing constructive criticism, the important thing is to offer alternatives. So... The deliverables view is just kind of lacking all context. You know which teams are working on things. You know what the deliverables name is. They give like a really brief description, typically one sentence kind of quick shot. This is what it is kind of a thing. And that's that's about it. That's about all the context you get. You might be able to see like how many individual devs are on it, but whether it's a system that's coming in a week or five years, who the hell knows? And that's what I mean by we're lacking context. And I was thinking a much more useful context would be a roadmap that worked on dependencies. So it would tell you uh, this piece of tech needs to come before this piece of tech. This stuff has to be get done before the ship will appear, before you'll get this ship, before you get the Pioneer, Rastar has to be working, server meshing has to be in, all these things have to be in. If you kind of did it on those levels, then it wouldn't be a mystery. People would know I'm not getting X until Y happens. And that kind of dependencies roadmap would be a lot more transparent, but it would also stop saying CIG up for failure because they, they feel like they're putting out all this information. They're like, you guys want information? Here is everything we're working on. Unfortunately, when we said that we want information, that's not the information that we needed because it doesn't matter if one dev is working on something one hour a week for 10 years if we're not getting it for 10 years. I mean, we kind of want to know what's being worked on now. When are we getting the features that we want? And we being each individual kind of has their own things that they're interested in. And so something that's working on dependencies would be a much better way to go, because then, you know, if CIG comes out and they say, OK, we're going to do bounty hunting or our plan is to do bounty hunting, engineering and such and such and such. And what these are dependencies dependent on is this, this and this. So before you get bounty hunting, this, this and this have to happen. And this is this is kind of where they will think they've mentioned this in the past like they used to have what would be dropping in a patch cycle each time and then as time would go on they kind of adjust their priorities as something turned out to be more or less difficult than they thought it would be they drop some things in more often than not they pull things out so they would be saying okay quarter four of this year is the bounty hunting patch and then by quarter two everything that was in that quarter four patch was gone. And you might have like spinning rims on vehicles. And it's kind of like, I never wanted that in the first place. What the hell is this? I wanted bounty hunting. What happened to it? 
but just kind of telling us not only what they're working on, but why. So why is bounty hunting going to come before exploration? Or why is engineering the first thing that you're going to roll out as opposed to this other thing? What needs to be rolled out prior to that being a thing? So in the early days of this project, one of the things that got content creators and actually not just content creators, but fans of the project, I'd say even CIG itself in trouble was they didn't really have content. They All they had were these design documents, kind of the broad plans of what they envisioned things would be. And as we would be driving around in our hangars and our PTVs, looking at our ships that we couldn't fly yet, and these JPEGs on the screen, all we could do is read these really detailed design documents on what all of these game loops would eventually be. You know, like I said, that kind of got CIG in trouble because basically people filled in the gaps and they sort of said, oh, well, they're saying it's going to be this. So obviously this is the plan that I'm going to make. And I'm guilty of this too. I've definitely done this with the band of Merchantman. Just because we don't know what all these things are going to be, we've got like a trade room on the Banu Merchantman. Does that mean that we're going to be able to pull NPCs in there and they will actually be able to interact with us on a level with Quanta that uh, we can trade stuff with them? I kind of doubt it now, but in our brains, we were kind of thinking, yeah, everything's possible. And CR certainly wasn't walking any of that back. He was all like, yeah, we're going to do everything. And now there's a little bit more realism and skepticism involved as we move into year 12. But one good thing about that was they certainly still have design documents now. And those design documents should be tempered by what they have actually learned in the last decade. And they know the engine now. And so since they know the engine, they can make much more realistic design documents now. And they're certainly working off of those. Rolling out a design document every once in a while now might not be such a bad idea. As opposed to giving us the deliverables view and the release view and stuff like that, give us a contextual roadmap of these are the dependencies and give us the design document so that we know what's coming, so that we can make up our minds of kind of, yeah, that doesn't really sound anything like it. And we can actually put our two cents in because they are making this game for us. And of course, at the end of the day, it's Chris Roberts game and Chris Roberts vision. If Chris Roberts wants mining to work this way and nobody wants to play it, it's going to go Chris Roberts way because it's his game. But still, you can put in your two cents like they had this golf swing scanner that you'll always hear me talk about that. It wasn't a good idea. It's kind of a gamified scanner compared to what we have now. And now we do the ping, but it used to be that you'd have to hit the scanner in the right way, and then it would do a really good scan. And it's kind of like no one would ever design a scanner that way. And this is more a simulation than like mini games. Like we don't need mini games like that to distract us. Make the scanner work like a scanner and let us use our skills and our brain to analyze the information that's coming back from the scanner. That's the kind of gameplay that we want from Star Citizen. So anyway, that's kind of all I had to say on that is uh, better ideas than the deliverables view where we don't have any context. Give us a ton of context. Go the other direction. So dependencies and design docs. Like, let us know what you're thinking and then it's kind of up to us whether we like that or not. Or we can kind of throw in our two cents, and if they like the idea, they can take it. If they don't, they can kind of be like, yeah, we're doing it our way. Thanks for the armchair devving, but we're good. Okay, so let's move on to where the next direction that I want to go. So let's head on over to the Cintiq here, and I'll start uh, drawing. We're just going to pretend that didn't happen. So... Uh, Let's start with, you've probably seen by now on both my shows and any number of others, Montoya's got a great one on this, and then <laughs> Salty Mike has a reaction to Montoya saying that it's not the same. Uh, I kind of agree with both of them, and I'm going to say why. So, okay, so let's say in an average patch, let's call this... Uh, 
three, let's call it 319. So we got 319 here. You've got your patch, 319 drops. And the way it goes is that drops, everybody's excited. So hooray and all of that. So everybody's super excited over here. And then kind of boredom starts setting in down here. So yeah, everybody, you've played most of the content. It's kind of like, okay, you know, there's not much else to do. And these people will generally find other things to do. They'll either go play other games or they'll kind of be like, eh, there's not much to do here. And around here is where the grumbling starts. And so this is where people get upset and they go and they start making posts on Reddit saying the game is dead. The devs suck. Everybody sucks. Uh, Chris Roberts doesn't know what he's doing. He can't manage the game. Everybody at CIG, this is a scam, blah, 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 blah. And then they'll drop the next patch and everybody's like, oh my God, this is amazing. 3.20 dropped and all this cool stuff is in there and new players flood in and all of this great stuff. And then, you know, everybody's excited, yawning, angry and going back again. So that is how things have gone. And for those of us that have been in this project since like the twos, uh, like 2.4, 2.5 onwards, we're real used to this cycle. Like anyone that's been in the game that long, you go through this thing a few times and you just generally know it's coming. And around here, you'll probably find like another game to play. Uh, this is where it kind of sucks to be the content creators like Salty Mike or Board Gamer, Space Tomato, all of those guys, because they have to figure out ways. They know this is coming and this is coming, and they got to figure out a way to make that exciting and keep people engaged. Because, I mean, for a few of those guys, this is their career. This is their job. Uh, so their whole income is based on CIG making content that engages people over this three month cycle. And now I'm going to get into that. So this is typically three months. And so this part happens over to, I'd say about here is usually about the first month. Like most of these patches, it used to be that it would be, you'd have about two weeks of content and you could play through every single thing in Star Says. And now it's it's about a month and a half, I'd say. Even if you go at it hard, you play it for about a month and a half and you've probably played most of the content. Uh, after this point, you kind of either have to be playing with a group of other people um, on the regular or you're kind of making your own goals. So for example, right now, Night 55, which I don't know if he's recording this, but he should, he decided how many, um, he would see how many bodies he could persist in his 890 jump. And so he, I think he is currently up to 500 bodies in his 890 jump. And he's still adding more and he's putting them in creative places and stuff like that. He is making the game fun and engaging for himself outside of the regular game loops that are in the game. Uh, for myself, I'm trying to um, I'm trying to rank up with uh, what is it Blackjack? I'm trying to get as high a rating with Blackjack as I can, and I've maxed it out once, but it was a few patches back, so I just kind of want to unlock the max bunker missions. But it's kind of a self set goal, and for the people that have that, they can sometimes play clear out over to here. But even around here, people will start getting bored and around that time like for myself uh lately i've kind of been playing satisfactory i kind of have a build that i've kind of been working on usually whenever i hit like this stage and usually you can tell this stage because all of a sudden all the scams is in post startup uh the problem is that you get new people who haven't been through this thing this sort of washing machine a few times and they don't know that this stage and this stage are a thing they only know this stage and the excitement up here when they bought in and that you kind of have to go through this thing two or three times before you're like oh this is this is just game development this is just the way it goes like especially early in a project and yes i know that we are now 12 years into this project more or less um but anyway so this is the usual cycle as you go through this little bit here. 
The problem we are in is that there's another cycle out there. So let's take a look at that. So on top of this quarterly cycle, which let's go ahead and put this here, you've also got, I'm going to really say that there are three of these. So you have a yearly cycle where kind of the same thing happens is that people will play this patch. So let's call this one. So let's call this 318, 319, 320. And so basically it follows the same path is you kind of go through a patch or you're going through the year and you know this other patch is coming. And so it's kind of the same thing is that people get more and more excited. Then this comes around and then out here you have SitCon. And SitCon is both cool and kind of a problem because basically it means that this patch is typically pretty small and most of the information around the game, like this general hype generation that you're getting here and here, isn't happening with this patch as much because they're all focused on SitCon and they're trying to make SitCon happen and SitCon is the great big wonder thing at the end of the year and everybody's amazed by it and everybody's looking forward to it. Uh, but now we have two things working against us. We're in this churn on this particular patch where we're here. And also the other problem that we're having is this year we've really only had this one patch. And so this patch is doing the heavy lifting of both having a yearly cycle where we haven't had much, where it's coming down here. We, we got 319, I believe in March, I want to say. And so this was March. And since then, we kind of are doing this. So whereas before, you'd have this cycle happening here, you'd have this cycle happening here, and you'd have this cycle happening here. So basically, For this amount of time here and here and here, CIG would be buying Goodwill. And then there'd be kind of like this crash while we wait for SitCon out here in October. So you'd still get like your churn right here, right here, right here, where people would get salty. The problem is that we haven't had that. And so it's been one big patch for the entire year that we got in March and people have just been getting saltier and saltier and saltier and saltier and angrier and angrier and angrier and angrier as this year goes on. So even those of us that have been here a while are starting to both hear that a lot more and even some of the people that are like diehard white knights uh, like board gamer started starting to kind of ask uh, what the hell is going on? Like this is two years of this. So last year it was 318 ate up this entire year. And so people were already kind of salty, but we were all like, okay, they got us PES. PES is out. Persistent any streaming is out. So we're in good shape. 319, 2023 is going to be a different year. And we've kind of been sitting on 319 for, uh, Unless they drop three, 320 here in the next month, and I think that's a possibility. I think we'll get it around mid-September, but that's still half a year that we sat on the 319 patch, which for a little while there wasn't working very well at all. And basically since Pez dropped, they told us that it would be breaking a lot, and they were correct. That doesn't change the fact that for many people, the game was broken. So... I mean, yeah, you can kind of hear it and understand why and still be frustrated with the project. And that is kind of where people are right now. Now I'm going to add in the third cycle that's at play. So this is the yearly cycle sort of playing both the patch cycle, which would normally be here, 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 and then SitCon. Uh, we've got this for an entire year compounding with 
the cycle of a patch. So we have both a patch cycle and a yearly cycle kind of compounding the saltiness of everybody. But there is a third ring around that whole thing. And that's the one that I'm going to get into now. So now we're going to take this year and squish it down because what we're actually looking at now is the whole game dev cycle. And so basically what happens here is a game drops into alpha. Everybody's excited. They hype it up. They hype it up. They hype it up. The Kickstarter goes crazy. People are ecstatic. Everybody thinks it's an awesome idea. And yeah, that's us there. Then it starts going and going and going. And people start realizing, wait a minute, this thing's actually, they're not going to finish this thing in days. It's going to be years. Like, uh, I don't know how many of you heard about Days of Dragon, or uh, yeah, I think it was Days of Dragons. Uh, this guy had this Kickstarter, and I think he was a solo dev, and he just wanted to make a game with dragons. He just thought it would be cool to kind of have a survival game with dragons. And so, I mean, he just sort of used uh, basically default free-to-use assets that were on the CryEngine or the... Uh, Oh, what's the other one? The other engine that's out there. One of a, one of the free engines. And I uh, just decided to put that out there of kind of, hey, this is just kind of the idea that I'm thinking. And a couple of the big streamers kind of saw it and said, that's awesome and picked it up. And the dude made way more money than he thought he was. Stop me when this starts sounding familiar. And he was kind of like, crap well okay uh you know i could throw this in the game if i get more money or this in the game and this in the game this in the game and you can have these things and the problem is is that eventually the kickstarter ended and he had to start making the game and it by then the scope was so much larger than he had originally planned he was kind of like well shit <laughs> now i gotta make this thing and so yeah people went from this to kind of uh what was going on with this project? You know, I gave you money. Am I going to get anything for this? Because there really wasn't a game. It was just basically stock assets from the shop. And people were all like, yeah, th this isn't what I pledged for. What's going on? I think he actually got sued and uh, started hiring people. Not too surprisingly, I think one of the first groups he hired were lawyers, which honestly, if you're going to start something like that, where you're, getting that funding a lawyer isn't a terrible idea just kind of protect yourself and kind of maybe think these things through but anyway uh people ended up at the angry stage real quick but that's kind of the way that these things go oh and i think he's actually releasing it now so he did actually come back and make good on the promise but anyway so you kind of go through the whole thing here where especially on a big production you're going to get a very similar cycle with the whole project of producing a game. Um, especially if it's going to take a long time, people are going to get upset. And the problem is, is that we are hitting the stage twofold with Star Citizen. So first we got Star Citizen out here. And then we have Squadron 42 in the background, which is being made in a black box we generally have a general idea what it is but it's out here and it's been waiting the same amount of time that star citizen has and not only that but it's sucking up all of the resources at least from a lot of our points of view of star citizen and so squadron 42 isn't coming out star citizen isn't coming out People are getting pissed about this patch cycle down here. Sort of slowly moving its way through all of this production. And now what's happening is that people are kind of hitting their breaking point with this project. From what I am seeing is that you've had two long patch cycles, two nearly year long, well, I guess a year long and like a six month long patch for 319 at this point. It'll probably be, yeah, I'd say about 
six to eight months for 319 to 320 depending on when they drop it for real and it'll obviously have issues with it and they'll drop three nine or three twenty dot one i'm guessing around sizzling but you have this thing where everybody was hyped everybody had their dreams up reading those design documents and everything everybody's super excited they started releasing things like plan attack all that we're all down here then we're kind of moving down here where it's really only the diehards but on top of the diehards you have the people that felt burned around here and they're kind of going okay you know something i pledged for a game i don't have a game this thing just looks like it's going to keep going forever when am i getting what i pledged for and they're kind of gradually moving up into here and unfortunately the rest of the community is kind of starting to look at what they're saying saying you know, they do have kind of have a point. This has been going on for a long time. Over that time, we've been getting both more information and less information from CIG. Like, they're keeping a lot of things in black boxes now. They're saving so much for CizenCon that that used to be like a one to two month window. And now it's basically year long where they're kind of saving content in the beginning. And you can tell they're holding things back. We can see things on the roadmap that we're like, wait a minute, what's going on with that thing? And they're kind of like, here's a bit on sound. And we're like, the sound is awesome. That is a really cool show. It really shows us what game development is. It really shows us what the sort of breaking ground that CIG is doing with some of this stuff. But really, really cool sound design will only take you so far. I want to know what the game is. Like, what am I going to be playing? Why am I going to be logging into this thing every day what are the game loops going to be what's going to keep me engaged sound will be one of those things that if it's done really well i won't notice it because it's good uh usually you don't notice those things like lighting or sound unless it's bad uh, and cig has a top-notch team but anyway everybody's kind of hitting the same stage in development right now because you're dealing with the patch cycle you're dealing with the yearly cycle and you're dealing with the whole dev cycle for the entire project and this is one of the prime reasons why i think that if this year's sitcom doesn't significantly move squadron 42 and or star and forward uh this right here could get real ugly and so what I'm hoping for, and I kind of went through this on the wild speculation. The main thing that I'm hoping for is that they go into Squadron 42 or they have an announcement at Squadron 42 and they say Squadron 42, quarter four, 2024, we're dropping it, guys. Yay, everybody screams, goes wild, goes crazy. What would also be awesome at on like, say, day two, they say, and we're dropping pyro on you now i have no evidence this is happening we know most of the assets for pyro are ready to rock like the planets are looking great we know they're working on the sounds that was a few months ago that should be good we know the locations are getting there like the stations and stuff like that they've been polishing for two years um so at the very least they could kind of drop pyro alpha on us and we know it would work uh, the thing that's been holding it up is server meshing. And so if they could drop that on us, that would be a huge win. And it would knock this little cycle back over to here. And it would buy CIG time. Even if they just launched Squadron 42, I think it would knock everyone over here in Saltyville. Well, most of the people in Saltyville back over to Excitementville because they would realize that progression has been made for the people that don't want squadron 42 it would mean that they are on their way to wiping that project out so they can start devoting more assets to the pu to star citizen uh and for the people that want squadron 42 which is a much larger market than we have right now uh it would start building hype um I would also like them to release like a 30 minute demo of the first chapter and just let people play that for free because 30 minutes isn't going to give away anything in the game. Like let them just do 
one quick patrol mission or something like that, interact with the NPCs who aren't just standing on chairs would be awesome. Again, not in the game, or I mean, not in the cards. They haven't announced anything like that. But those three things would, the community would explode. But I think even if they just announced Squadron 42 is dropping, that would be huge. Uh, and I fully expect that. And at this point, if they aren't going to be dropping Squadron 42, they need to say something. They need to say, okay, we need to kill these rumors. And you've heard me say this over the last couple of months, and I'm not kidding, that if they've just let that rumor run to kind of build up hype for sitcom, and they're not dropping a release date for Squadron 42, that is a huge mistake. And again, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I'm not going to quit on this project until it goes belly up or they release it like those those are the two options um that i'm kind of in this for the long haul doesn't mean i wouldn't be really disappointed so i do think that even if it's a lackluster sitcom starfield dropping when it is might actually be a good thing because if they have to zero in and focus on squadron 42 next year then having starfield in the mix and having people playing that and being distracted by that as opposed to constantly being a thousand feet down in star citizen development might not be a bad thing people might need a reset to kind of jump away play another game that has some similar elements and then come back and remember why they love this project in the first place um but if they could do any of those three things uh it would be great i wish they would do all three i don't know about the demo but i could see them possibly dropping pyro and a squadron 42 launch date and that's about all i got for this one guys so uh let me know what you think uh again i'm gonna be on vacation so i will read all your comments when i get back uh be good to one another and catch you next time